Good afternoon, friends, parents, and family members. Welcome to the School of Engineering and Applied Science 2023 Doctoral Commencement Ceremony. Will you please rise and join me in welcoming the Penn Engineering Doctor of Philosophy graduates. It is my great pleasure to invite the faculty of the School of Engineering and Applied Science to join in the procession. Thank you. 
You may now be seated. Good afternoon, graduates, family and friends, colleagues on the faculty and staff. I want to welcome you all to the 2023 Penn Engineering Doctoral Commencement Ceremony. I'm Vijay Kumar, the Dean of the School of Engineering and Applied Science at the University of Pennsylvania. And I have to start by saying it's truly gratifying to be at this podium on one of the most important days of our academic year. We're celebrating a milestone that only a few exceptional individuals around the world can even hope to achieve. I want to first welcome the guests who have joined us to celebrate this milestone, the partners of the graduates, parents, children, relatives, and friends. You are an integral part of the support systems that enabled our graduates to reach the finish line. Let me assure you that we take as much pride as you do in the achievements of our new doctors of philosophy. And to all the mothers in the audience, a special welcome as we approach Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. And of course, above all, I welcome the graduates. As dean, it's my honor to be the first one to extend to you the collective good wishes of the faculty and everyone in the Penn Engineering community. Congratulations on everything you've accomplished. You've collectively received many degrees. You've likely attended many graduation ceremonies, each one of which was important. But I don't have to tell you that earning a PhD degree is a, a very special occasion. This is a special degree. Indeed, it's probably one that you will not receive again in your lifetime. <laughs> in fact, the mere suggestion that you would embark on another PhD <laughs> will likely cause you to break out in hives <laughs> or in hysterical laughter or as they say on the internet, ROFL. I don't have to tell you that it takes a tremendous effort to earn a PhD in engineering. You know and we know that you're here today because of your hard work and sacrifice over several years in the prime of your life. You have reached the highest level of academic achievement in your field and the result is remarkable. Some of the graduates here today have returned to campus after finishing their degrees months ago, while others may be just about ready to cross the finish line. But as commencement at Penn just happens once every year, this is our opportunity to gather together and celebrate. We celebrate the fact that you are now authorized to pronounce these definitive words, Trust me, I'm a doctor. <laughs> in years past, you would join us on stage after being hooded by your faculty advisor. This symbolic act was important. Indeed, after being hooded, you're no longer students. You officially join us as colleagues. Unfortunately, because the stage of the Irvine Auditorium has remained static, while our dynamic PhD program has grown, we're not able to invite you to join us on stage. But make no mistake, symbolism aside, the significance of the passage of rights from student to one of us still remains. As you well know, philosophy is the systematized study of general and fundamental questions. And from this, we derive the Doctor of Philosophy degree. 
You have invested a considerable part of your life pondering a fundamental question, conducting seminal research, inventing new algorithms, proving theorems, performing novel experiments, or creating new tools and techniques. No matter what your contribution was, you significantly advanced your field. This knowledge, your contribution, will impact us in the future in ways we cannot conceive of today. There's a saying about forecasting the impact of science and technology that's attributed to Dr. Roy Amara, who was the president of the Institute for the Future. Amara's law, as it's called, says we tend to overestimate the effect of a technology in the short run, but we underestimate the effect in the long run. We've seen this play out in so many fields, perhaps nothing closer to home than in the field of nanotechnology. At the turn of the century, the field of nanotechnology took off with visions of single electron transistors, molecular switches, and quantum arrays. The expectations were stratospheric. And of course, soon, it was followed by waves of skepticism. But at that time, no one imagined that 20 years later, nanotechnology would give us the tools to synthesize vaccines containing lipid nanoparticles that would carry intact mRNA to a target site, res resulting in a vaccine technology that saved humanity from widespread destruction during the pandemic. There are so many parallels today. We're seeing modern statistical machine learning with large-scale data sets with similar stratospheric expectations. Are AI systems finally coming of age? Are they able to reason about context and even explain themselves? Could AI software be used for high-stakes decision-making and in safety-critical applications in the future? Even though you and I may be skeptical, I certainly wouldn't bet against Amara's law or against the long-term impact of these advances. Similarly, I'm optimistic about our collective fight against climate change, the biggest challenge that faces humanity today. And just as with nanotechnology, it's important not to be short-sighted. Should we invest in green metals, such as cobalt, copper, nickel, and rare earth elements, and such technologies as wide band gap semiconductor electronics? Are incentives to increase adoption of renewable energy sources and electric vehicles justified? Will focus research and development of novel negative emission technologies such as direct air, carbon capture, and sequestration pay off in the long term? Well, the short-term impact of each of these approaches can be questioned, but there's no doubt in my mind that we're underestimating what we'll achieve as a society over the next several decades. Friends and family of the graduates, as you reflect on these tectonic shifts, you should be filled with pride that our new doctors of philosophy have always known the impact of investment in our future. When they embarked on their journey, they did not overestimate what they could achieve in five years. And we as faculty are definitely not underestimating what they'll achieve in the long term. Graduates, you are the reason that the future will be one filled with as yet unknown advances and solutions. You are the reason I'm confident that we'll meet and overcome the grand challenges that face us today. We are certain that the work you began here at Penn will continue to push boundaries and break barriers, and that because of you, in 10, 20, and 30 years, we will see today's fundamental inquiries in science and engineering and the creation of inconceivable technologies will soon have widespread impact. I, for one, cannot wait to see what the promise, creativity, and hard work of this group will bring to us. I want to wish you, each of you, all the best on your coming journeys, and congratulations to all of you.
It's now my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Lance R. Collins. Dr. Collins is one of our own, having graduated both a PhD and master's degree in chemical engineering from Penn Engineering. In 2020, Dr. Collins was named the inaugural vice president and executive director of the Virginia Tech Innovation Campus. Prior to that, he was the dean of engineering at Cornell. In 2011, he played an instrumental role in partnering with New York City to build Cornell Tech. As dean at Cornell, Collins, Dr. Collins accelerated the college's diversity efforts, overseeing the increase in underrepresented minority students from 8% to 19%, and undergraduate women from 33% to 50%. In 2021, Dr. Collins was elected to the National Academy of Engineering for his pioneering contributions in the study of turbulence. I'll also add that on a personal note that he's been a great counsel to me and the school's leadership in our strategic planning process and our focus on diversity and inclusion. Dr. Collins also serves on our board of online education. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Collins to the podium. Thank you, Dean Kumar. Trust me, I'm a doctor. I want to extend warm greetings to everyone on the stage, to the parents, family, and friends in the audience, and especially to the 2023 graduates of the Penn Engineering School. It is my distinct honor to welcome all of you into the community of scholars. I congratulate each of you for your hard work, your dedication, your perseverance that enabled you to reach this milestone in your lives. This graduation ceremony marks the end of one journey and the beginning of another. And as an alumnus of Penn Engineering, I decided to focus my remarks on perspectives I have gained over the 36 years since I sat in your seat as a freshly minted PhD. My overarching message to you is that you are much better prepared for the unknown twists and turns of your career than you currently realize. Penn Engineering has prepared you well for the journey. There are obvious things required for a successful career, ambition, integrity, diligence, honesty, but there are also what I refer to as hidden variables that are less obvious and yet can have an outsized impact on your career. I will focus my remarks on these hidden variables. As a trained researcher, you have honed your ability to perform research at the murky boundary between the known and the knowable unknown. You learned how to perform the sequence of experiments or simulations or mathematical analyses to advance the boundary of our understanding. These skills are powerful, durable, transferable, and you can consider them in the bank. However, they alone will not define your career. Indeed, there are more fundamental questions for you now to consider. And this brings me to the first hidden variable. How does one choose the problems upon which to work? This is not easy. Predicting impact in advance of the work is very hard to do. You don't really have any way of knowing the outcome or even if there will be an outcome. It helps to have worked alongside the brilliant minds of the Penn faculty. To illustrate my point, let me challenge your knowledge of jazz by asking, what do John Coltrane, Herbie Hancock, Charlie Mingus, and Sonny Rollins have in common? They all played for Miles Davis. At Penn, we all played for Miles Davis. My thesis advisor was Dr. Stuart Winston Churchill. Stuart is no longer with us but I am quite confident he is smiling down upon us, beaming with pride at your achievement. Stuart was the very embodiment of my Penn experience. He was a brilliant engineer, a member of the National Academy of Engineering, recognized for seminal contributions across a wide range of heat transfer and fluid flow problems. He was also a Renaissance man who appreciated art, music, theater, and history. 
Our weekly meetings began predictably with me providing the usual updates on my work. But then through his stream of consciousness thinking, we would pivot to the related work of historical figures. One day it might be arguments between the famous fluid dynamicist Prandtl and his, and his student Blasius over their groundbreaking work on a boundary layer, and then it might suddenly shift to Newton's Principia or Einstein's relativity. His agile mind transcended centuries in a flash, but with one intent, to reveal the utterly haphazard nature of progress. Dr. Churchill's gift was to frame their circumstances in a manner that brought them proximal to our own work. The data fit an exp exponential, he would say, leading Max Planck to the black body radiation. Nobel laureates were, after all, human beings going about the same business in which we were engaged. He emphasized how plain dumb luck in the hands of the prepared mind could lead to the richest outcomes. Let me illustrate with a personal anecdote. In 1997, we published a paper that showed that turbulence could dramatically increase the collision frequency of particles suspended in the flow. The application that motivated that work was understanding DuPont's process for manufacturing a powder called titanium dioxide. One of my students presented his work at a graduate forum and a, and a friend of his that's in the in meteorology department had to rec recognize something. He informed my student about a long-standing open question in the cloud physics literature regarding how, in some cases, clouds could develop very quickly, much faster than models could predict. Scaling arguments suggested the same mechanism found in the DuPont process could explain the acceleration of clouds. We published the hypothesis in an atmospheric journal and it touched off a firestorm, both pro and against. The stakes were high as clouds yielded the largest source of error in climate predictions. Pivoting my research from the comparatively narrow scope of a single chemical process to advancing climate models increased the impact of it many fold. Penn prepared me to make smart choices, prepared you as well, trust your instincts. My second hidden variable is self-advocacy. Doing great work is important, but receiving the credit you deserve for that work is equally important. The research world is competitive and it is easy for good work to be drowned out by louder voices. I am not advocating for arrogance, but excessive humility can also be a problem. Think of it this way. Your important contribution to the world could go unnoticed if you are not forcefully bringing it to the world. The primary communication tools remain peer-reviewed publications, workshops, presentations. However, in our modern society, open access repositories such as archive and social media such as Twitter and LinkedIn are increasingly important. Part of their power is their ability to build a community. Let's return to my earlier example of clouds. Our simulations made the case for the hypothesis, but much more work was needed to confirm those results. We needed a community of experimentalists, simulators, and theoreticians to really make progress. To that end, we established the International Center for Turbulence Research to help organize groups across the world. Furthermore, ICTR provided a platform to exchange data pool resources to enable the most sophisticated ex uh, and costly experiments to happen. It drove remarkable pro progress over the past 25 years. My third hidden variable is leadership. Here I am referring to your willingness to step into leadership roles when they become available. This could be within the workplace or professional society Opportunities to lead may come along and it is up to you to seize those opportunities. Here again, I can reflect on my own experiences now as an administrator. In 2005, the director of mechanical and aerospace engineering at Cornell stepped down. A committee was formed to identify candidates to succeed him. When it was my turn to, to speak to the committee, I was 
very surprised to discover that my name had surfaced as a potential candidate. Apparently, my colleagues saw something in me that I had not seen in myself. I accepted the appointment. In hindsight, I now see that it provided me the opportunity to influence the school in ways I could not as a faculty member. As you can tell from my bio, once I got a taste of administration, I discovered I found it fulfilling. I subsequently became the Dean of Engineering at Cornell and now direct Virginia Tech's innovation campus. Each position brought me new challenges that forced me to grow in different ways. If the opportunity arises, I hope you too will step up to the challenge. Okay, let us recap the hidden variables. First, carefully consider the problems upon which you work. Consider their complexity, how they fit together, and most importantly, the potential they have to change the world. Second, be an advocate for yourself. Use your voice to tell your story forcefully and without apology. And finally, if the opportunity arises, be prepared to take on a leadership role when you feel you can make a positive difference in the world. I want to conclude by congratulating each of you and wishing you the very best as you embark on, your, on the next phase of your lives. You are the future and the world awaits your brilliance. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you, Lance, for uh, your heartfelt and inspiring remarks and your insight into the three hidden variables. Um, Graduates will proceed with the main act for today. Uh, this is the holding ceremony by your faculty advisor. As I said earlier, this is the main act because it truly symbolizes a rite of passage. Um, and this rite of passage is as emotional for us as faculty as it is for you. And so each one of us is honored and we feel privileged to be part of this. Let me invite Dr. Sonia Guak, Director of Student Life, to the podium so we may proceed with the holding ceremony and the granting of the degrees. We will now begin with the announcement of the graduates for the Doctor of Philosophy degree. In addition to presenting the diploma to the graduates, it is our tradition for our faculty, usually the student's advisor or the graduate group chair, to place the academic PhD hood onto the graduate student. We will announce the recipients of all PhD degrees in alphabetical order within each academic department in the order, or the order they are printed in the program. And now, it is my great pleasure to announce the graduates in bioengineering. Dr. Ro <laughs> Dr. Ravi Radhakrishnan, department chair, will join Dean Kumar and associate dean, <laughs> Boontao Lu, in receiving the graduates. Dr. Gail Cohen, graduate group chair, will come forward. We also invite the student's advisor, if present, to join in placing the hood onto the graduate. We will now begin. Thomas Campbell Arnold. Rachel Aubin. <laughs> Catherine Ba. 
Bautista. Margaret Billingsley. <laughs> Jacqueline Carlson. Ashley Fung. Brandon Hayes. Michael Huber. <laughs> Divya Jane. Leahy. <laughs> Abby Loniker. Michael Malone. <laughs> Alvin Mukalo. Christopher Ohm. <laughs> Matias Porras Paniagua. Estelle Park. <laughs> Sadhana Ravi Kumar.
Brittany Scheid. Sarah Shepard. Michael Tobin. Michael Tobin. Changyin Zhao. Thank you. This concludes the announcement of graduates in bioengineering. And now, it is my great pleasure to announce the graduates in chemical and biomolecular engineering. Dr. Chinada Mosuji, department chair, will join Dean Kumar and Associate Dean Liu in receiving the graduates. Dr. John Crocker, graduate group chair, will come forward. We also invite the student's advisor, if present, to join in placing the hood onto the graduate. We will now begin. Jian Chang. Ren Jing Huang. Chong. <laughs> Keshav Pato. Joseph Rosenfeld. <laughs> Paradorn Romanitorn. Sayed. <laughs> Christian Tibetsky. Amritesh Tirumalai Swami.
Mai Wong. Tian Chung Wang. <laughs> Jing Yu Alex Wu. Antal Young. Thank you. This concludes the announcement of graduates in chemical and biomolecular engineering. And now, it is my great pleasure to announce the graduates in computer and information science. Dr. Zachary Ives, department chair, will join Dean Kumar and Associate Dean Liu in receiving the graduates. Dr. Mayur Naik, graduate group chair, will come forward. We also invite the student's advisor present to join in placing the hood onto the graduates. We will now begin. Ocean Argawal. Bernadette Kathleen Butcher. Soham Dan. Joel Hippolyte. <laughs> Kishore Jyoti Murugan. Sungjun Lee. Mijae, Sungjun Lee. Shakanlu <laughs> 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 
Ido Roth. Pepper. <laughs> Kelly Shiptoski. <laughs> Nofel Yassin. Lindsay Zhang. Thank you. This concludes the announcement of graduates in computer and information science. And now it is my great pleasure to announce the graduates in electrical and systems engineering. Dr. George Pappas, department chair, will join Dean Kumar and Associate Dean Liu in receiving the graduates. Dr. Troy Olson, graduate group chair, will come forward. We also invite the student's advisor, if present, to join in placing the hood onto the graduate. We will now begin. Alp Aidinolu. <laughs> Xiaoru Chen. Heeson. <laughs> Mikhail Heho. Harshad Kumar. Shiwan 
Liu. Matthew Malencia. Ian Miller. Xing Du Chao. <laughs> Kendall Jordan Queen. Hans Rees. <laughs> Luana Ruiz. Sanjari. <laughs> Henry Shulevitz. Thomas Turner Topping. <laughs> Yuan Long Shao. Jin Tao Fu. Thank you. <laughs> this concludes the announcement of graduates in electrical and systems engineering. And now it is my great pleasure to announce the graduates in material science and engineering. Dr. Xu Yang, department chair, will join Dean Kumar and associate Dean Liu in receiving the graduates. Dr. Christopher Murray, graduate group chair, will come forward. We also invite the student's advisor present to join in placing the hood onto the graduate. We will now begin. Jin Tao Fu. Ashwarden Zog. Yeah. 
Ling Wong. Wang Yu Chen. <laughs> Ray Yin. Thank you. This concludes the announcement of graduates in material science and engineering. And now it is my great pleasure to announce the graduates in mechanical engineering and applied mechanics. Dr. Kevin Turner, department chair, will join Dean Kumar and associate Dean Liu in receiving the graduates. Dr. Prashant Puroet, graduate group chair, will come forward. We also invite the student's advisor present to join in placing the hood onto the graduate. We will now begin. Rossini Beausejour. Juan Diego Caporale. <laughs> Devin Carroll. Lu Fang. <laughs> Jake Floyd. Xiao Han Hu. <laughs> Shang Lin Huang. Gokulanan Ayer. <laughs> Zimin Jiang. Alyssa Johnson. <laughs> Georgius Kisas.
David Levine. Brian Torres Maldonado. Daniel Mox. Shumuk Shankar Pandey. Ranjang Shan Ran. Alexander Spinos. Gnana Sarya Vankayalapati. Ching Tian Yin. Zakaria Hussein. And we have one latecomer for ESE. Shingran Chen. This concludes the announcement of graduates in Mechanical Engineering and Applied Mechanics and ESE. <laughs> and this concludes the reading of all names of graduates in our doctoral programs. I will now invite Dean Kumar to the podium to deliver closing remarks. Well, this brings us to the end of the 2023 doctoral commencement ceremony. I'm honored to count each one of you as my colleague. We are honored to count you as our colleagues, and I'm confident that we'll see great things from you in the years to come. By the powers vested in me on behalf of our faculty, I now pronounce you Doctors of Philosophy of the School of Engineering and Applied Science at the University of Pennsylvania. I could not be prouder of all of you. Congratulations.
Oh, you stay. Thank you. I now have one final request of you. While you are solving big problems and shaping our future, I want you not to forget to increase access to technology for young people. It's only through access to technology and the creation of future generations of engineers from diverse backgrounds that we will overcome future global challenges. Just as the opportunity to become an engineer was available to you, share that opportunity with those traveling behind you. I'm sure that the many hands that helped you guide you along the path to your seat today, and you want to look back and reach out your hands as Penn Engineering alumni. I ask everybody to remain seated until the academic procession leaves the stage. And for the final time today, congratulations.